Hello, I'm Matt Dietrich from Reboot, Illinois, along with Madeline Dubeck. Today we're here in the James R. Thompson Center in Chicago, where we just got done with a nice interview with State Treasurer Mike Frericks. We did. We had a chance to uh, ask him some sort of silly, quirky, personal questions so you could get to know him more as a person and not just a politician, and uh, we think you'll enjoy it. I did play basketball in high school, uh, but I was the second shortest guy on my basketball team. Wow. Where Seriously? Is this? Seriously. No one ever believes it. Uh, Were you shorter then? I was shorter then. I was not playing on a team full of giants. I had a late growth spurt. <laughs> Uh, so I basically I tell people I've had two growth spurts in my life. Uh, I grew really quickly when I was young. By fifth grade, I was the tallest kid in my class. When I started playing basketball on a team, it was clear I was going to be a center. They, no one taught me to handle the ball. No one taught me to shoot outside. They said you play with your back to the basket and you stay within three feet of the basket and score. Because my dad was tall. His dad was tall. His brother was tall. There was no question I was going to be tall. The problem is that I just stopped growing for probably four or five years. So by seventh grade, uh, I'm no longer center, I'm forward. By eighth grade, I'm sort of a small forward. Uh, my team went to state, uh, but I was not the reason. But I continued to play and throughout what, what high school. High school. Is this? Well, so I would, this was Gifford grade school, and then I went to Rantoul Township High okay. School. I went from uh, getting my driver's license about 5'8", about 115 pounds, uh, to four years later, growing about a foot and doubling my weight. I didn't play basketball in college, so by that point I was fairly tall, I still had some really good skills, but uh, when you grow that quickly, it can take a little while for coordination to catch up. <laughs> uh, I tell people, uh, yes, I get asked all the time, but I also lived in Taiwan. And if you think I'm tall in this country, you should really see me there. Uh, every conversation dealt with my height. And so in comparison, it's not so bad. And it's not necessarily individual facts I've learned, but just to get a different perspective, how different people see you and I see the world. Um, you know, for the first time in my life in Taiwan, I grew up in a small town where I was related to half the people and looked like everyone else. The first time in my life, I was definitely a minority. Mm -hmm. And it's, people treat you very differently when you look differently than them. I mean, it probably taught me an awful lot of empathy. Uh, but I've got a seven-year-old daughter, and uh, really, I put a lot of hours into work, and when I have free time, I try to uh, devote them to her. And what does she want to do when you get time with her these days? Um, we do an awful lot of building of Legos. We do a lot of reading together. Uh, we do the occasional puzzle or play games together. Uh, last night uh, we read Junie B. Jones. Uh, she has gotten into this book series and so that's been on my nightstand a lot lately. And what are you reading that's more of an adult level? More than Junie B. Jones? That isn't <laughs> government or politics related. Uh, well, I'd say I probably on uh, a nightstand you'll find a lot of uh, political books, uh, but more sort of from history, uh, biographies, nonfiction. Uh, things that, you know, the more you're involved in government, the more you realize it doesn't change all that much. I mean, the people change, the times change, the haircuts change, but you can, I feel you can learn an awful lot by studying people who have come before you in office. Uh, I, would, I would say I, I run a wide range. Uh, I grew up in a family, my dad listened to a lot of country music. Yeah. And as a young adult, I, I rebelled against that, uh, listened to sort of more rock, uh, but now when I hear some of that old country music, it brings back positive memories. Uh, there's awful, also an awful lot of songs from the mid-90s that uh, when I was in college and listening more frequently uh, that I probably find myself comfortable listening to today. Who's your favorite performers or someone you'd love to see in concert? Um, well, I would say from that first era, if Johnny Cash were still alive, I listen to a lot of Cash. Uh, and the same thing probably if uh, Nirvana were still around, I listen to a lot of that in my three days. Um, well, because I have a seven-year-old daughter, I watch an awful lot of Disney, but I was very excited. Uh, you know, I've taken my daughter to a lot of cartoons, a lot of things that uh, she wants to see, but I think we finally, just over this Christmas break, had our first joint movie that we were both excited to see. I took her to go see Star Wars, The Force Awakens. And what'd you think? Uh, I enjoyed it very much. I, I enjoyed very much taking her. When I saw The Force Awakens was coming out, 
These were movies I grew up with. I went to go see the first Star Wars movie in the theater when I was four years old. It was a new movie, uh, and it didn't disappoint. It was a nice movie to watch with him. Uh, I grew up with cats, uh, but I'm on the road too much. Uh, I would be a cruel pet owner if I had a cat or dog at home right now. Um, you know, I represent the entire state, uh, so I don't feel any specific obligation for one portion of it. Um, however, at the same time, I think that uh, we benefit in government when we have people from diverse backgrounds. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if everyone has the same background, there's not a lot of uh, difference of opinions. I found that in the General Assembly, one thing I really liked about serving in the General Assembly was that people came from different walks of life, they had different ethnic backgrounds, different gender, different regional uh, uh, diversity as well. And our statewide constitutional office, regional diversity, geographic diversity has been something that's been missing. And so, yeah, I think I do bring a different perspective coming from downstate. And uh, I'm very supportive of people downstate, but it's my job to represent everyone. But, you know, you bring your own, you bring your own biases. Uh, it's, they say you can take the uh, kid out of small town, but you can't take the small town out of the kid. I grew up Cubs fan. Uh, when I was two days old, uh, I was born a cesarean section. My mom got an infection. She couldn't hold me. The doctors asked my dad if he wanted to hold me. And as the story is relayed to me, my dad wasn't much of a, uh, a child care giver. He said, uh, I, yeah, I'll hold him. Can I watch the game while I, while I hold him? And so I watched the Cubs play the Philadelphia Phillies when I was two days old, and I've been a Cubs fan ever since. Uh, I do. Uh, there's a long way to go, and that's one of the things I tell people about campaigns is they are fluid and they change. And uh, all of this coverage of poll numbers, uh, I just find silly. Because if you look at a history of poll numbers and campaigns, they change very quickly, and they change very widely, and so I think that some of the fundamentals are, are good for her, but there's a, a long way to go. So as we said earlier, the very first thing we need to do is to pass a balanced budget. And I think everyone involved in these negotiations agreed there's going to be, need to be some new revenue and some cuts. Um, and so that's a, a great place to start. And then I think, I'm a little biased at the Treasurer's Office, I think that if we can make smart investments in Illinois, and if we can help people to invest in themselves, make it easier for them, give them tools to do what they know they need to do, uh, we can help turn the state around, and those are the things that I've been focused on. Illinois. No. Who is? Um, uh, the future, uh, I'm not much at predicting. Oh, I think there's, I think there's lots of people who have a lot of people who have talent to step up and do this. But it's you know sometimes it's not just the innate talent, but you know who has the right talent at the right time, and that's tough to judge. Because as a tall, lanky politician from Central Illinois. I have a soft spot in my heart for Abraham Lincoln. And if you look at his history, early on he demonstrated some definite strengths and abilities, but he lost several races. He lost a U.S. Senate race, and some people probably thought his time is over. You know, he is, he's lost a congressional race, he's lost a U.S. Senate race, he's lost various things. Uh, but what he had was abilities for a time when our country was uh, in great turmoil, was being torn apart, and that he was the right person at that time. If uh, if the country had gone a different path, who knows if we would have realized that greatness. So uh, I think that we have lots of talented people in our party, and we'll uh, see what the future holds.